I recently lost an uncle and it's really made me consider life after death. He was a believer. Um, so where do you think he is right now? I love that question. I love that question. He's in paradise. He's in paradise. You know, John Wesley called paradise the front porch of heaven. It's not quite our eternal state, but it's certainly not our current state. Uh, your uncle and any believer, when they take their final breath here, they open their eyes there. They are transported, their spirit is transported immediately into the presence of Jesus Christ. And the first order of business in paradise is the healing of the soul. You might recall that story in Luke chapter 16. It's such an interesting story that Jesus told about the rich man and Lazarus. Lazarus was a beggar, and uh, his body was covered with sores, ulcerated, open wounds. And every day he was carried to the entryway to a mansion, and there he was deposited. Could the man be more destitute uh, in our modern day Parlance, he would be a homeless person, you know, no place to sleep. I wonder how many times he heard phrases like, that guy needs to get a job, or what a waste of life. He, he had physical wounds, but even more profound, he had emotional wounds. And then in one moment to the next, the destinies of the two men are reversed. Uh, the rich man goes to Hades, and Lazarus goes to paradise. And the scripture says that uh, angels came and carried him to the bosom of Abraham, which is a picture of a place of total comfort. Abraham is the second most famous Jewish man to ever live, only behind Jesus Christ. And here you have a man who was destitute, who had nothing, then all of a sudden he has everything and he is held in the arms of Abraham. And there in full view of all the people in paradise, he receives healing. He receives healing. Paradise is that holding tank, that place where we all go if we die before the rapture, where our spirits await that moment of the rapture. Perhaps you're acquainted with the words of the Apostle Paul who said uh, to be away from the body is to be at home with the Lord. So he's referring to a time in which we are away from our bodies, but we are at home with the Lord. Did you know the Apostle Paul was given a peek into paradise? I was caught up into the third heaven 14 years ago. Whether I was in my body or out of my body, I don't know. Only God knows. Yes, only God knows whether I was in my body or outside of my body. But I do know that I was caught up to paradise and I heard things so astounding that they cannot be expressed in words, that no human being is allowed to tell. Look at that language. Heard things so astounding. He didn't have words for them. It was so wonderful. Looking back years later, he couldn't remember if he was in the body or out of the body. He saw things that he wasn't even allowed to tell. They were so wonderful. So Daniel, your uncle is experiencing this right now. Isn't that beautiful? That's a good word. Yeah. He's experiencing this right now. You know, I think it's interesting that when Jesus was on earth, he raised three people from the dead. And I've often wondered, why just three? And then it dawned on me, maybe he couldn't get any more volunteers. <laughs> because what they're enjoying is so spectacular, so beautiful. Uh, the book of Hebrews talks about that great cloud of witnesses, that great cloud of witnesses. And the, the writer of the book of Hebrews is envisioning kind of an Olympics. And he sees this stadium full of witnesses and they're all cheering for us. They're rooting for us. They're encouraging us. I think they're even praying for us. You know, Jesus lives to make intercession for the saints, the scripture says. And when we go to paradise, we'll be made like him. 
Now, for that time, we will not have our physical body. We'll have some type of celestial body that will equip us and allow us to do whatever we need to do. But we'll be surrounded by saints. We'll be surrounded by those who have gone before. And I'm wondering, as you're thinking about this, who might be cheering for you right now? Just think about it. You know, a grandpa, a grandma, uh, maybe a Bible teacher, maybe the person who baptized you, maybe somebody from the second or third century who's, who did then what you're doing still. They're cheering for you. They're rooting for you. They're calling for you to finish strong. When rapture happens, those in paradise will be reunited with their physical bodies. So we won't be just in spirits forever. But until then, we will be, and until then, we will be worshiping Jesus.